Hey, what's up everybody? So if you're new to my channel, my name's Tara. I sell skincare products on Etsy and my channel's all about sharing with you guys what I know about making skincare products and what I know about selling them, having your own skincare brand, all that jazz. So a lot of you guys have asked me to compile a list of ingredients that I recommend buying if you're a beginner. So this is going to be a list of ingredients that I personally think, this is just my opinion, that is the best and easiest for beginners to use and formulate with in order to create the following products. So with all these ingredients listed, you'll be able to make a face wash, body wash, toner or facial mist, serum, shampoo, conditioner, lotion slash cream slash body lotion, body butter, and it will be an anhydrous body butter and or a emulsified body butter, a facial oil or massage oil or body oil, and uh, a jelly face mask or just like a normal face mask. But I know you guys love those jelly face masks and you'll be able to make one of those with all these ingredients. But um, that is it, you'll be able to make all those. You can probably make, you know, other products as well, but I think those are the main products that, you know, people use and you'll be able to make all those. So let's just get into the list. This is in no special order, let's just go for it. All right, first off, number one thing you need to make basically everything other than anhydrous products is distilled water. It has to be distilled water. A lot of people ask me if they can use purified water. No, it's gotta be distilled. And uh, you can get distilled water from like Target, Walmart, Meyer, Kroger, Vons if you're in California, Publix if you're in Florida, I don't know, whatever grocery stores and everywhere else. Uh, Piggly Wiggly, that's in like, what, North Carolina, South Carolina? Wherever you get your groceries, you can find distilled water there. Now, if you're in like different countries, I feel like a lot of people in India have messaged me and said they have issues finding distilled water. I'm not really sure uh, where, what you do about that. So I don't have advice on that because I don't know anything about other countries. But all I do know is that you need distilled water, not purified water. Next is some plant oils. So, you know, like sunflower oil, safflower oil, hemp seed oil. I recommend doing research on carrier oils to see which you like the most. If I had to recommend just a good handful, I recommend jojoba oil, sunflower seed oil, safflower oil, apricot kernel oil, and macadamia nut oil. I don't know, I just ra randomly named off a few of my favorites. But you wanna make sure you're buying oils that are catering towards like what you want to uh, combat with your skin. Like if you have oily skin, you wanna use like safflower oil or hemp seed oil. If you have dry skin, you want to use like apricot kernel oil. So do some research on carrier oils, see which ones you prefer buy those. Then along with plant oils are butters. So you really only need probably like one or two butters. You don't need to buy a bunch unless you want to buy a bunch to see what you prefer. But the most popular butters are shea butter and cocoa butter. So pick up some of those. I really like shea butter. I use it all the time. Whichever you prefer, buy both if you want. The next thing I recommend is emulsifying wax and F. This is an emulsifier. So you'll be able to make face lotions, body lotions, creams, with emulsifying wax and F. And the reason I recommend this one specifically is because most suppliers sell it. It's really common, it's easy to get your hands on. And also it's a really reliable emulsifier because it really, it just does a really good job at emulsifying water and oil. It's not EcoCert. So if you want an EcoCert emulsifier, I highly recommend Rita Mulse SCG. It also goes by the name EcoMulse. And in my experience, it's a really reliable emulsifier as well, it's just, for a beginner, I would recommend emulsifying wax and F over the Retamols, but that doesn't mean a beginner can cannot use Retamols SCG. It's just, I think emulsifying wax and F is more reliable and just easier. It's also cheaper. So um, take your pick on one of those. Along with that is I recommend either Cetyl alcohol or Cetyl alcohol. These are co-emulsifiers. They act as co-emulsifiers and thickeners and emollients in body lotions, creams, face lotions. So pick either Cetyl or Cetyl. I personally use Cetyl, but Cetyl is very similar to Cetyl alcohol. So pick one of those. And again, there are a lots of different emulsifiers and co-emulsifiers. These are just the ones that I'm recommending for beginners. Glycerin. Glycerin is literally like a must, like right up there with distilled water. It's a humectant. It helps draw uh, moisture into the skin. So it really can go in 
every single product and highly recommend it. Look at the ingredient list on some of the products you own and glycerin will probably be on like 80% of them, maybe even more than that. I also recommend picking up a couple extracts and it's your own personal preference on what you prefer. I recommend just going through like formulator sample shop or a lotion crafter and just checking out all their extracts and seeing what uh, kind of resonates with you. Like if you're reading the description of the extract and you're like, ooh, I would love to add that benefit to like a face lotion, purchase it. Um, also keep in mind what, what your skin concerns are when purchasing extracts. You don't need too many. Maybe like when you are first starting out and splurging, just get like two. Really just depends on what your budget is, but um, you can't really go wrong with like getting like five of them, you know? They all are amazing. I use botanical extracts and mainly everything I make and they, they're just great. We love, we love botanical extracts, at least I do. You can use them in face washes, lotions, shampoos, conditioners, face masks, face mists, toners, they're used in everything. So get yourself some extracts. And also something I should mention is buy all these ingredients in the smallest amount possible. That way you can figure out if you actually like them or not. Cause just because I recommend them doesn't mean you're going to like them, right? All right. And you don't want to buy a big amount of an ingredient and then end up hating it and just it going to waste. So made that mistake too many times. Xanthan gum. Xanthan gum is, it's used for so many things. It's mainly a thickener, but it also acts as a stabilizer. So xanthan gum is used in emulsions, like lotions and creams and stuff to help stabilize the emulsion. And it can also be used to thicken face washes. You can use it at, at about like 1%. You can also use it in jelly face masks at about like 2%. Um, you can use it in serums, but I don't personally like it in facial serums, but you know, you might like it. And also it, it can be used to thicken shampoos, but don't recommend it. Do not recommend xanthan gum to thicken shampoos. And if you're going to purchase xanthan gum, highly recommend xanthan gum soft specifically. You won't regret it. Now, when it comes to thickening shampoos, Crothix, great, so easy to use. You just add it to your formula, mix it in. It does help if you heat it up a little bit. It can be used to thicken face washes, shampoos, body washes. Did I mention that with all these ingredients, you can also make a body wash. I don't know if I mentioned that. Also shaving cream. You can make a lot of stuff with all these. But yeah, my favorite thing to use the Crothix for is the thickening shampoos. So if you wanna get xanthan gum and Crothix, can't go wrong. Now for a preservative. This is a preservative for all your products that contain water, Liquid Dermal Plus. It's active in pHs between three to eight, so it can be used in all of these products I'm mentioning that are aqueous, meaning products that contain water. Liquid Dermal Plus, so easy to use. You only need to use that 0.5%. You just add it right into the product during the cool down phase, mix it in, bam, it's preserved. You can buy it pretty much anywhere and it's uh, very inexpensive. Now for your anhydrous formula, so like your body butters, your sugar scrubs, you can also make sugar scrubs with all these ingredients I mentioned. You just need to buy sugar, which you probably already have in your cabinet. What was I talking about? Oh, I remember. So if you're making anhydrous formulas, body scrubs, uh, body butters, body butters don't really need preserved. It's just uh, sugar scrubs. Watch my video all about preservatives if you need to know more about preservatives, but uh, Optifin. So anything that contains only oil soluble ingredients but might come into contact with water like sugar scrubs, you should use Optifin as your preservative. So great, Optifin is what I recommend. So preservatives, Liquid Dermal Plus and Optifin, you'll be good. Now for your main anionic surfactant, this will be the ingredient that you're gonna be using in like your body washes or your face washes, specifically for like oily skin. You can use it for other skin types, but I personally like it for like oily skin, um, is AOS 40. Now there are lots and lots of different anionic surfactants and this is specifically liquid anionic surfactants is what I'm talking about. AOS 40, highly recommend it. It's great in shampoos, body washes, face washes. I think you guys will love it. It's also sulfate free and I know a lot of you guys are probably looking for that. As for a non-ionic surfactant, cocoa glucoside or decal glucoside. Never worked with decal glucoside, but it's very similar to cocoa glucoside. They are mild surfactants, so they're great to use in like face washes that are, uh, you want them to be gentle for like dry skin, sensitive skin. They also help solubilize a little bit of oil in with your face washes and stuff or your body washes. So if you want to use a fragrance oil in those products, you can use cocoa glucoside in there and not have to worry about a emulsifier or solubilizer. So cocoa glucoside or deco glucoside, highly recommend. You can also use them to make 
micellar waters. So you can also make micellar waters with all these products too. Cocomin Doperol Bentane as your amphoteric surfactant. This pairs great with AOS 40. So for body washes, use like AOS 40 and your Cocomin Doperol Bentane. For face washes for oily skin, use those two as well. Um, bubble baths, use those two. Again, you can make bubble baths with all these ingredients. Um, I keep naming off even more products you can make with all these ingredients. And then for your cationic surfactant, Highly recommend BTMS 50 so you can make a conditioner with it, you can make a face lotion with it, body lotion with it. Yeah, if you wanted to, you can just not get emulsifying wax enough and just get BTMS 50 instead. Totally doable. An alternative to BTMS 50, just in case for, for some reason you don't want it, is ICE Hair Restore. Love it. You don't even need to melt it down. It's cold process. So if you want to make something cold process and you don't want to like do the whole heating and holding method, like that scares you. ICE Hair Restore. This next one might be pretty obvious, but fragrance oils and or essential oils. Um, just keep in mind with essential oils, some of them are phototoxic. So you really need to be um, weary of that. And I know there's like a lot of controversy between fragrance oils and essential oils and skincare products. That's not what this is about. You do you, do what you feel comfortable, okay? Now next, this I think is optional, but this is just in case for those of you guys who want to make uh, serums specifically, is either hyaluronic acid, but it has to be a high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, specifically the 1-1.5 million Daltons hyaluronic acid from Lotion Crafter. I use this in serums. It makes them nice and thick and jelly. Hyaluronic acid is great for your skin, helps plump it, hydrate it, all that jazz. Or Cepamax Zen. This is a gelling ingredient also uh, to make serums, but it can also work as an emulsifier. So if you wanna make serums that include oils, Cepamax Zen. You can also use it to make face washes, to incorporate oils as well, body washes. You can actually make a cream gel moisturizer with it too. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's possible. So yeah, if you're wanting to work with like jelly products, uh, like serums and stuff, then hyaluronic acid, high molecular weight, 1-1.5 million Daltons, or Cepamaxin. They're both great. If you want one that's more versatile, probably Cepamaxin over the hyaluronic acid. This one's also a little niche, but air root powder. So if you're planning on making anhydrous body butters specifically, you're gonna want arrowroot powder because that will make the body butter far more pleasant to use. It'll get rid of all that greasy feeling. You can get arrowroot powder at Walmart. So if you change your mind, you can just go pick it up later, like last minute. All right, so these last two are kind of optional as well, but I'll explain to you the benefits of them. Hydrolyzed proteins. This isn't necessary, but they're great to use in like moisturizers, face washes, body lotions body washes to add kind of like a conditioning effect. There's all kinds of different hydrolyzed proteins, rice, oats, uh, wheat, and if you guys wanna purchase them for like more conditioning effects for your products, go ahead. They're not necessary though. And then there are um, hydrosols. These are great specifically for toners and face mists. You can also use them in like face washes to add a little bit of fragrance to your products naturally if you don't wanna use fragrance oils or essential oils. And then one more thing, again, this isn't necessary. And that's why this list was so hard to compile because it's like not everything is necessary, but it might be necessary to you, you know? Everybody's necessities are different, so it's hard to compile this list, but polysorbate 80. This can be used to like, if you wanna make a toner and like add a little bit of oil into it, polysorbate 80 will do wonders for that. Or if you're making a face wash and you wanna add a little bit of oils to it, polysorbate 80. Yeah, it's just, if you're wanting basically to add oil to a like watery product that isn't like a lotion or cream or something, polysorbate 80. There you go. I will go ahead and just put a list up on the screen for you guys so you guys can screenshot it if you would like. And I'll do my best to sort of like organize everything so it sort of all makes sense. But um, yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You've all been asking for it for so long. I will also uh, just link down below to all my suppliers that I purchased from so you can like, go through all the suppliers and check them out if you want. I'll also put direct links to all these ingredients I mentioned. As for things that are like extracts or hydrolyzed proteins, I'll just put like 
a link to like the page on like formulator sample shop with all the extracts do you know what i mean like i won't like link to like a specific extract but like to like the category of extracts on the website does that make sense hope that makes sense all right yeah and that's about it i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have more questions leave them down in the comments below and if i think of any ingredients that i forgot i'll put it in the top pin comment but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this and i'll talk to you guys next time later Stardust Bath & Body, Nature's Farm Girl, Kennedy's Essentials, Let's Blend, Wallflower Wildflower, Heartfelt Beauty, KAJ Bath & Body, Blue Mint Soaps, Salt Air Label, Lanise Beauty, Shark City Naturals, Ohana Lay, Danny Botanicals, Hempy Girl, Brie Maquillage, Alchemy & Clay, Bible Belt Boutique, London Latris, Naturally Flawless, Facial Daily Rituals, Your Spiritual Midwife 333, Paige Murray Hair Care, and shoplevy.com. I also sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll link my Etsy shop down below along with all my patrons. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life. It's still the path that I've chosen. Because I've had a vision, now I'm on a mission to find myself with